STEM is everywhere, and we all know that this is vital to our future. This morning, we have invited some renowned executives and STEM students to share the importance of STEM education in various fields. The essential STEM elements for business success and entrepreneurship and the challenges ahead. The convener of this round table, Dr. Roy Chong Chi Ping, co-founder and non-executive director of Tektronic Industries Company Limited of Hong Kong. Dr. Chung was awarded the Industrialist of the Year in 2014. His chairmanships and memberships are seen in many public bodies as well as NGOs. As founder of the Bright Future Charitable Foundation Scholarship, he is also a well-known philanthropist in town. He's committed to youth affairs and participate actively in voluntary and public services, locally and abroad. The other panelists are Mr. John Chang and Mr. Nigel White. Mr. Chang is founder and CEO of Dragon Creative Enterprise Solution Limited. As a graduate of the Vocational Training Council, Mr. Chen is a world-class smartphone specialist. He is known as the father of smart glass in Hong Kong and a new star in the IT industry. His company is a local pioneer in AR applications with a successful track record in public crowdfunding. Mr. White is executive director of Gammon Construction Limited of Hong Kong. With over 30 years of experience in managing major civil and building projects in Hong Kong and overseas, Mr. White is responsible for leading contractual, commercial, legal, insurance, and procurement activities within the Gammon Group in Hong Kong, Macau, China, Singapore, and Vietnam. Let's give a big round of applause to welcome Dr. Chung, Mr. Chang, and Mr. White. We would also like to invite the following students to join the discussion today. They are Phoebe from Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology of Australia, Aleski from Turku University of Applied Sciences of Finland, Roger from Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education, Elise from Technological and Higher Education Institute of Hong Kong. The topic of the discussion is STEM, the pathway to success. Dr. Chung, please. Good morning, everybody. And um, I'm very honored to be here to uh, chair this section called STEM Students Chat with Executives. Um, as you all know, STEM education has received more and more attention in recent years, and we believe STEM education should have a key role to play uh, within the vocational and professional education and training, since it contributes significantly to the welfare of society and helps to shape the pathway to success for our young people. Today, we are very happy to have two very successful entrepreneurs joining us on the stage. That's Nigel. Nigel is from the construction uh, industry, as you all know. And Jordan, Jordan Chen, who is the uh, very successful uh, startup entrepreneur, who are both prominent figures in their own field to share their success story and tell us how STEM education in the past has helped them to climb the career ladder in their respective industries. Also joining us today with four youngsters who are all STEM students. Alice 
is from uh, Finland. LC, right? LC, okay, from Finland. Phoebe is from Australia. Phoebe, okay. Roger and Alice and this are both local VTC students. Let's give them a warm welcome. <laughs> yes, right? yeah. Thank you very much. Don't worry. So our rundown is very simple today for this section. First, I would like to talk a little bit about myself and then I will pass it to Nigel and Jordan to share with us their STEM experience and how important STEM education has been in shaping the development of their career. And then, um, and what are the essential STEM elements for business success and entrepreneurship? And then I will invite the students to talk about their choice of STEM subjects and share with us their career aspiration and so on. So first I will start with myself to talk a little bit about myself. I just want to let you know that I was born and raised in Macau. I'm not really a local Hong Kongish. And due to a family financial problem, I was not able to finish my high school. And I had to leave home and came to Hong Kong and worked in an electronic radio uh, factory back to 1968. And after working in this company for over 10 years, I had the opportunity to start my own business with my German partner, Mr. Horst Putbill, as you all may know. And uh, our business, well, luckily, has grown from a local, a small local OEM manufacturer to now a global corporation with an annual turnover or sales of over 5 billion US dollars. And I believe, as you know, that I, I didn't even um, graduate from high school. And I believe that the, um, one of the key factors which helped me to uh, achieve this success or to bring the company to this success is mainly because of the uh, STEM subjects which I have learned in my high school. And as a matter of fact, at that time, we didn't have any STEM. We didn't know what kind of STEM is. But I did learn um, physics, chemistry, mathematics, algebra, geometry, and these kind of subjects. But these subjects really helped me a lot when I started my company, especially in the uh, uh, production process, planning, and also in product design, which actually when I studied this, I didn't know about how, uh, how good these are. But anyway, when I started my company, I know, okay, I can take some of this theory to, uh, to, 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 um, to put in my uh, production process, planning, and also product design. So I really benefit from this. And not only that, as, my, as I grew my company, I found that this knowledge was very limited. So I, I was very lucky that I was able to continue my study in the, a special program org organized by Warwick University, that's IGDS uh, co um, in Hong Kong. And I was la very lucky as a mature student, I finished my master degree in uh, 1995 and I got my master degree, uh, doctor degree actually a few years ago, 2012. It's uh, really lifelong learning, continuous learning, right? <laughs> and, and also the uh, real uh, vocational and turn into professional um, uh, VPET. Um, and uh, as a matter of STEM, not only helps uh, me to uh, uh, my, not only help me in my career path, but also widen my horizon and improve my problem solving skill. And that's why, and that's the reason why I always encourage the young people, the young men to more focus and study in the STEM subjects. So it's a little brief introduction about myself. Now I would like to pass over to uh, Nigel to talk about the STEM uh, subjects. Thank, Thank you. you. Your experience, right? Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here this morning. I have to say uh, thank you for inviting me. I, I'm, I'm uh, truly impressed by the size of the, uh, 
of the uh, the conference that you, you've put together. It's uh, extremely well organised and it's quite humbling to be here actually, uh, especially when people want me to talk about myself, which is uh, a little embarrassing. Unlike uh, Jordan on my right, uh, who, who, is, who really is a young entrepreneur and doing great things, I, I have followed a more corporate uh, role in my life and, and come up through the corporate ladder, so it's a, a nice compliment between the two of us, possibly. Uh, I, I got sort of thrown out of school when I was 16 and, uh, and struggled a little bit and started on a technical course uh, in construction. I started a, a, t a technical apprenticeship working. Uh, I did that for a, a two or three years and eventually got myself onto a higher higher tech course doing day release. And after, after a while I grew up a little bit and I realized that uh, I would go on and do a degree. So I did a degree in quantity surveying and uh, I graduated successfully from that. And I, I was really fortunate. I got myself a, a position in a company that was uh, growing like gangbusters. I guess it would be like coming to the IT world today or, or wherever the company I was was growing really quickly. Uh, and that gave me lots of opportunities to put all that great technical learning that I had in those invaluable years of doing day release, uh, which were then uh, complemented by the academic learning uh, through into a company that was growing very quickly. And I was given experiences and uh, positions which were well outside my years, I suppose. Uh, and then the economy went flat. So... Uh, I jumped overseas and went to work in the US. Same company I got transferred across, which was again another invaluable experience, a different culture, a different way of operating, a uh, different style of engineering. I went from imperial to feet and inches, which I still struggle with. Uh, uh, and then from the US uh, about 21 years ago, uh, I came to Hong Kong. So I, I guess I've been working in Hong Kong almost as long as these young guys on my left have been alive. <laughs> So, so uh, and in Hong Kong, again, for, for an engineer, uh, what a great place to be. Uh, we have some of the most challenging and interesting engineering projects anywhere in the world. Uh, we don't always get it right, but more often than not, I like to think we do. It's an exciting, dynamic place to be in, a, in an engineering world. Um, I, I feel blessed that, the, uh, that I actually came through a day release and technical route to start with. I think that laid the foundations for a real understanding of my profession and what I do. And you always have that technical knowledge to go back to. You can never be anything that takes you back to grassroots level to really understand. So yeah, so that's basically how, how I got to where I am today. So I'll pass you on to Jordan. Okay, thanks Mr. Wright. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Jordan, founder of MacGates Limited. And uh, actually, we are currently developing an AR smart glass. That is a leading trend in the future because uh, Samsung and Apple just announced that two years later they will uh, produce an AR smart glass for, for the customers. So we have developed this kind of technology since 2013 five years ahead from Apple. That means not my product is, is better than Apple, just your direction. You believe this kind of technology will lead the trend. So um, our products has already sold it to over 40 countries. Why? Let me uh, share some experience uh, to you. Uh, because um, I think that the STEM education is pretty much uh, important to me, especially to me. Because uh, I was graduated from uh, VTC in 2006. Okay, so you can imagine, I do the hardware products uh, combining the ecosystem, the software, many, many applications. If I don't know, I, I, I didn't study the engineering courses, I didn't study the uh, te technology courses, how can I do this kind of projects, how to lead the trend. And if you want to be an entrepreneur or want to start up a company, uh, mathematics is, and the science uh, is very important to you because you must uh, know how to analyze the trend, 
how to analyze your competitors and the marketing, how to control the cash flow, the risk management, okay? So the logical mindset and scientific mindset is very important to you uh, if you want to be the entrepreneur. So um, I think the STEM education is uh, very important to everyone. And especially now, you, you know, uh, lots of uh, like uh, AR smart class, actually our smart class is already sold it to the primary school, the university, and of course, uh, you can use it to your, in your class. You can, uh, lots of uh, e-education, you can use iPad, lots of technology now. So I think the STEM technology is, uh, the, the education is very important. That's uh, my opinion. So it's inspiring you and give you an opportunity to explore the world. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. And now we invite the students to to uh, to introduce yourself to us. So start from your head, Alice. Yeah. And hello, uh, everyone. My name is Elise, and I'm year four environmental engineering and management student of the Technological and Higher Education Institute of Hong Kong. And I'm always very concerned about the environment and especially uh, some uh, sustainability and renewable energy. And I'm also particularly interested in how to make better use of the seawater in our daily lives. And my program is cover a uh, very comprehensive and covers many areas, and such as the like uh, waste management and air, noise, water pollution. And this can allow the student to understand the seriousness of environmental problems in Hong Kong, full site wastes, and such as uh, some wastewater treatment plants and some landfill in Hong Kong. And moreover, and I have uh, done the project uh, about reducing the electricity consumption by replacing the normal concrete with the foam concrete. In doing so, we can reduce the carbon footprint and therefore it can protect our environment. And furthermore, we, we have opportunities to do projects on various topics and including designing a wastewater treatment process and thereby we can apply the uh, formula uh, theories and some uh, models and that's learned from my courses. So, and to the real situation in Hong Kong. In addition, we can develop uh, problem solving skill and strengthen our critical thinking through our programs and which is all useful for my personal development. And also, during my internship with BIM Society, I have read some reports from the consultants and give the comments and ratings on the green building elements. So this is all going to be uh, very useful for my career development. And in the future, I hope I can contribute to the so, uh, uh, well-being of society by working in the construction field. And, I, and I'm sure I will have a lot to learn from Mr. White today. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Alice. Now we... Pass to uh, Alice Key. Alice, uh, Alice, yeah, from Finland. Please. Thank you, Dr. Chang. So, hello, good morning to everybody, or afternoon, almost. Yeah. yeah. So, my name is Alexi Hakkarainen, and I come from Turku University of Applied Sciences, Finland. Uh, I have just graduated as a Bachelor of Engineering in Electronics and Telecommunication Systems. Uh, the reason why I chose electronics as my program is because I have earlier qualification as an automation technician from a vocational college and uh, I wanted to further develop myself in the field. And also uh, technology and new innovations nowadays are guiding us towards a better future. So I thought maybe it is important to have people in the STEM fields to actually make this future come true. And uh, uh, as for my program, it consists of a lot of STEM elements, such as um, uh, engineering, of course, uh, mathematics in form of uh, electrical engineering and equations, 
that sort of thing. And of course, te technology, science comes along with electrical engineering. Um, and all the features of my program are put to test in uh, project works and practical training courses and finally in a thesis work. Um, also, uh, working in a uh, company during practical training course has actually helped me in my career now that I'm graduated. I will start working in a company where I did two of my total three practical training courses in my program. So it is safe to say that uh, education in STEM fields can actually help you in your future career. Um, but also studying and education has made me competent and marketable, so it is important. So I can use the competence I have gotten from the education in probably in future like developing the fifth generation of wireless communication systems, like 5G, maybe you have heard about it. We're living in the 4G era right now. And maybe like new innovations in the field of electronics, hopefully, that sort of thing. I guess that's about it. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Alessi. And now, this freebie from Australia, Phoebe. Thanks, Dr. Chung. Um, but firstly, I have to apologize for my voice. Apparently, I've been talking too much here and I've lost it. Um, so, my name's Phoebe and I'm a university student from Australia. I'm studying civil engineering and business management and am currently in my final year of a five-year double degree. Um, coming from an all-girls secondary college, it was never really encouraged or expected of me to head into the engineering field. Um, I always had an interest in maths and an interest in design, but had never really considered becoming a structural engineer. And I was always interested in construction and intrigued by the concept of building design and how structures so large essentially come from nothing. However, I never really considered heading, heading into the construction industry. Um, um, it wasn't until about my final year of um, secondary schooling where that idea was actually exposed to me and I decided to flow through with it. And I can honestly say that I'm so happy that I did decide to make that decision and I have stuck with it for five years because it's opened up so many opportunities to me, especially being a girl in, in that field where it's male-dominated. Um, I've completed many university um, projects which are applicable to everyday life. I was given the opportunity to come to Hong Kong to do this presentation. Um, I've worked for a small consultancy company which gave me the opportunity to actually contribute to smaller design works on one of the major highways in Australia. Um, and I'm currently working for an international design and build um, construction company and have been uh, exposed to a lot of a lot more superior people who have uh, given me a lot of advice and exposed me to a lot of new things. Um, within my program itself there are many STEM elements obviously being engineering um, and I do honestly believe that all these foundations have helped me to get to where I am today. Um, I recently actually received a graduate position with Lendlease, again, the, an international company. So, um, in Australia, this means that uh, post-university, so once I've finished all my studies, I'm given the opportunity to actually move on to a successful, well, hopefully, a successful career with a larger company. Um, I'm very excited to begin this new chapter in my life and... Um, I do encourage anyone considering heading in the same direction to, to truly follow through with it because there aren't enough people that actually enter into, especially girls as well, who enter into this field and stick with it for, for the long run. So, yeah, I do encourage anyone here to follow in the same path that I did and, and hopefully end up with a successful career like these guys. <laughs> Thank you, Phoebe. Now, Roger. Thank you, Dr. Zhong. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Roger, and I'm a year two student doing a higher diploma 
in Rehabilitation Services at the Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education. I am a caring person and I like helping and taking care of people. I noticed that Hong Kong has an aging population which might be a serious problem in the near future. So I want to be trained as a physiotherapist so that I can help the elderly people and those who are physically weak and need care. As a STEM student, I have to learn subjects like essential chemistry and application, human physiology, and this science and mathematics related knowledge helps me to apply what I've learned in real life. Through my program, I can understand myself better, like I'm quite a patient guy, and I think I can do a good job in helping my clients in the future. I've also learned to become more innovative and creative through this program. For example, when I designed activities for the elderly, I tried to apply creativity in the design of these activities. Let me give you an example. I once taught the elderly to do some clock dance. Clock dancing is something very innovative. Why? Because nobody has ever tried this. I designed some simple jumping steps in this activity, making use of the time of clock. So the elderly can learn to build up their muscle strength and body balance. I'm really happy that the VDC can provide an alternative pathway for students like me to become a professional workers in the Hong Kong society through its vocational and professional education and training. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. And as a matter of Roger, I register first because very soon I need your service. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, now we just finish our, our self-introduction section. Now we move on. As you know, the theme for today is uh, STEM students chat with executives. What do you want to chat with us? <laughs> um, I would like to start. Um, Jordan Chang, I actually have a question for you. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people my age are very interested in starting their own business, very interested in being innovative and basically bringing an idea to life. How did you manage to turn your conception into reality? Were there any particular steps that you took which you believe were crucial in making sure that what was in your head was actually able to uh, come to life? Your okay. question is to Jordan, right? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. really have, she really have interest in the startup business, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, so. It's a good question. Actually, um, I always give uh, advice to someone who want to be an uh, entrepreneur in the future. Uh, and my point, ideas uh, is not the key successful factor uh, to the company. The key successful factor is the execution. So when we have the idea, so how to form the team to build the products, and you know, uh, like our products, uh, the AR smart glass, actually is the most difficult e electronic product in the market. So we use uh, three years to do the R&D. So you will fail, maybe every day, you will fail anything. Like uh, for the op uh, optical parts, we have already manufacturing around 26 times in three years. So, and for the cash flow, maybe in our and period, you don't have enough money to invest the product because, because you failed many times. So you need to find the investment outside, angel investment, venture capitals, or even your pocket money, okay? <laughs> so, so, um, you need to control the risk. But in R&D period, your competitors will exist. So what is your edge and advantages compared to your competitors? If no, you, you lose everything, but uh, your competitors like uh, you know, Microsoft, Google, Apple, is the IT giants in the world. Your, you know, for me, it's only a Hong Kong startup. How can I compete with this kind of IT giants? So you need to think the innovation 
uh, to apply in your products, you need to think every day. So actually in the development periods, we face lots of difficult difficulties. You need to, as I mentioned, you must have the logical thinking to analyze the market, how to solve the problems, keep learnings every day. So finally, your product can be exist in the market. Yeah. Thank so you. the angel fund and also the capital fund has to trust you that you are burning their money every day, right? <laughs> yeah, I burn my money every day before they come in. <laughs> After you burn all yours, then they, they, they need their money to burn. Because right? I don't have money now, so... <laughs> You're burning their money. Okay, anyway, you know, <laughs> we will find the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel, anyway, right? So, now, okay, Roger. Yeah, Mr. Jane, I also got a question for you. Uh, as you know, I'm very concerned about the well-being of elderly people. In what way can I identify and related technology help old people, especially those who are physically very weak and who live by themselves to enjoy a better quality of life? Um, first, I, uh, I suggest you to look more, uh, see more articles in, in, in maybe just search in Google. Uh, you can apply lots of technology, especially for the elderly, like um, our AR smart glass, uh, some like uh, Amazon, the Echo, you know, the AI uh, speakers, and of course some a a IoT objects, how to prevent the risk in, in, in the elderly, because some elderly uh, know, know any uh, relative or any son or to, to to accomplish with them. So you need to apply some technology, how to avoid some risk, how to communicate uh, with their son by using the echo or some smart glass or some mobile phone, mobile application. Try to connecting the people with the internet. So actually you can apply lots of technology. So I can, uh, encourage you to think more about this kind of area to help the elderly, okay? Uh, and so it is a potential to develop for elderly in the future, right? Sorry? Uh, so uh, as you uh, answered, and is it a potential for, to develop for elderly in the future, right? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You want to add? Yeah, I'll just add on to that. I, that I, I think it's an exciting time we're living in, and for uh, especially elderly, but, but everybody, with smart building technology is going to change the way the people live and improve communications between everybody. Uh, we need our designers and our young minds to come along to how we really can use that smart building technology to, to look after the aged and provide better welfare facilities for, for people in all the community. That is definitely going to happen. It's your generation that's going to make it happen, so help us. <laughs> like the smart home. And like smartphones, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Internet of Things, uh, uh, just the communication technologies of, of how that happens from home and how that controls heating and carbon energy and all the rest of it. So, yeah. yeah. Really, IT really helps a lot right now. So, any further question? Yeah. Actually, yeah, 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 I do have uh, one follow-up question for Mr. Jordan. Actually, yeah, uh, about the smart glasses, uh, they are like really revolutionary, but uh, do you actually see it in the future that more and more people will actually use them? And uh, do you have like something else coming up? Like, are you developing anything new? Do you have, have you foreseen anything? More. Um, actually, uh, I truly believe uh, AR smart glass will be a trend in the next at least ten years, at least, because uh, you know everyone knows the mobile phone is a trend because everyone uses it, right? But we predict the trend in 2013. Why? The reason why? 
I think that's the, mo uh, the AR smart glass will be a trend because you can imagine everyone plays the mobile game and uh, watch movie in, in when you in empty out. Okay, so but first the first problem is you need your your hand to hold the mobile phone. So tired, and the second yeah yeah it's it's true. You got some pain in your fingers and your neck, right? So the second problem, the screen is only five or even six inch, right? So small. So you, you can see the screen is quite large. When you watch movie, why do you go to cinema, right? So, but in AR Smart Glass, first, we release your hand. You can just sit on the, in MTL and or take a bus and you can see a very large screen or let's say over 100 inches. So which one is better do you think? If the content is enough, just like, like, like Google Pay or App Store, many, many applications are there, right? So in one day, if the application and contents are enough, AR Smart Glass will be placed with the mobile phone. That's point of my, my point of view, yeah. Yeah, that is the future product, right? Uh, so you guys you. really have interest in this startup and uh, the new technologies, right? So, uh, so we, let's put down the glasses. Any other questions? We can use it in the, in the, in the class or lecture, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, just in smart glass technology, uh, in construction now, uh, in uh, on the Crossrail project in London, uh, I, was t I didn't see it, but I've been told, and my boss used it, they've got on the construction helmet smart glasses involved, where you go onto site, and they're using the smart glasses to pull out the method statements onto the glasses so you can read the method statement on the project through the glasses. So that technology is really happening very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Technology is all, always working for the future. Yeah. I yeah. was going to say, that was, I was actually interested to hear what your, your opinion was on that, Nigel. What, how, how you think that the construction industry is going to advance, given the digitalization of the world today, where do you think the construction industry is going to make the connection between the two? Do you see like, this smart glass idea taking off within construction sites? And uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, construction is going to change, uh, I think, in the next 20 years, f uh, fundamentally. Uh, robotics are coming. We're already starting to use robotics here in Hong Kong. Uh, I think... Uh, off-site manufacture, modularization will, will come in. Uh, digitization, uh, definitely. Um, we're using uh, we're using all sorts of uh, uh, 3D design. Um, uh, that we saw the drones up there. Uh, we were looking at your pictures of of your skull with the uh, 3D pictures. 3D myself. pictures. We, we, when we, I did my in-prime. So yeah, uh, th th 3D design, uh, 4D planning on, on construction projects, uh, quite remarkable. Now even I can understand the drawings as they, they come through in a, in a 4D as we're going to construct the process. It makes life much safer for everybody because uh, you, you can actually build in the 4D model. We, we uh, use virtual reality in safety training. Uh, the guys put the 3D goggles on and they go onto the construction site and create mayhem. It's, uh, it's, you know, gaming technology to tra train people about safety. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's going to become a cleaner industry, a safer industry, uh, and uh, one where technology is going to... I need Jordan to tell me how it's going to change because I'm too old to work it out. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, again, you guys, it's, it's the world you guys are going to be living in. It's what you're going to create. Now we just turn from how, how we apply the smart garages in the construction mm. area. Now, Ellis, you are in the construction area, right? So any question for Nigel? Um, thank you, Dr. Jung. Um, I do have a question for Mr. White, and I'm a student from the uh, construction field, and I have uh, two questions for you. <laughs> so firstly, as you know, the landfill in Hong Kong is almost full, and can, how can we further to reduce uh, construction waste in uh, when we are building a new construction. And the second one is uh, what's about the design of a building and how can green building technology and be a part of and so as to reduce the electricity consumption? Yes, thank you. 
Oh, two questions. Are you allowed two questions? <laughs> <laughs> the first one was a, was a cruel and difficult question because landfill is a huge problem for Hong Kong. Um, we need to get much better at coordinating uh, at, and having a sustainable construction program in Hong Kong. We seem to move from a boom to bust. So we're, we're one minute we're creating loads of railway tunnels and blowing up mountains and creating lots, lots of construction waste. Uh, we need to get better at coordinating it so that the material that we're excavating, there are similar projects where we can use that material or fulfill. So uh, a uh, controversial project that might come up in Hong Kong is the East Lantown Metropolis. Again, you know, it would be nice to tie that landfill project into a project where we were tunneling at the same time so you could offload the materials from one to the other. We need, uh, we need to make land available for prefabrication and modularization. That would reduce waste considerably. We need to take as much of the process off the construction site as we possibly can and put it into clean factory conditions. For sure, so that's the second thing we should be doing. Um, we also have an aging workforce in here in Hong Kong. I think something like 60 to 55, 60% of the workforce are over the age of 50. So we need to one, train more and make it more attractive for young people to come into the industry through better technical training. And I was really interested to hear what the, the German lady was saying about what happens in Germany on that, that score. If we make the industry cleaner, it attracts people into the industry uh, and safer. So that's, that's good. Um, so yeah, in a roundabout way, there's lots we're doing that we're not doing that we should be doing. Uh, but we need to get smarter, for sure. Oh, and building. Sorry, I didn't... Yeah, green building to reduce uh, energy. I'm uh, building. Uh, I've got a big plea for Hong Kong. Uh, we need to make a really smart building, clean carbon, uh, low carbon footprint building, using all the latest technologies as, as a, a flagship to sell around the world. Uh, there's a great building in Amsterdam called The Edge. Uh, I think Deloitte's are the owner of it. Uh, it... Uh, it uh, reuses rain, it uses clean energy, uh, it reduces office space, it's uh, zero carbon, uh, using uh, uh, technology for people bring their cars in, the lifts are waiting as the car comes in to, to save energy. There's, there's a lot we can do on building uh, technology and we're not leveraging it as well as we should be. So again, I'm throwing it back to your generation coming in now. You've got to be reverse mentoring us guys to tell us what's out there, what we can use to, to, to make life better. But design's critical in all of that. But in Hong Kong, actually, when, when we talk about the green building, we always just uh, believe that putting grass on the roof, that is green building, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, when we have buildings that are putting energy back into the system, uh, that then, we, then we've got real green buildings, you know, when people are carpooling or car sharing to work and uh, when we have bike tracks to work. The, 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 uh, there's, a, there's a building they've just finished in London called the Leadenhall Building, right in the heart of London. It's got five parking spaces because they're mm -hmm. expecting everybody to ride a bike to work. You know, when we, when we have that sort of thinking, then, then we've got real, real green, uh, high-level thinking going on. <laughs> so any follow-up question from you in the construction area? And because and there, uh, in construction field is a f uh, have a main contractor for the construction, and for how to ensure that the maybe the uh, following the construction activity is f uh, followed by the uh, subcontractor to ensure that they will comply the uh, maybe the environmental policy of the company. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe I'm, I'm I'm slightly naive. I actually think that everybody cares about the environment, you know, um, and most engineers do. Uh, and all good companies who are run by good people, and most companies are successful companies, aren't run by people chasing dollars. They're, they're run by people chasing uh, the contribution they can make. So I like to think that the supply chain we work with uh, are meet the environmental standards without too much pushing, and they do because they, they, they want to. Um, it, the whole supply chain from the very top to the very bottom has to get aligned. It has to start from the end user. So I don't think so much the supply chain, I think the end user. One of the problems Hong Kong got, has is that the end user 
isn't always the developer. So when, when that happens, the developer isn't so concerned about environmental issues. So a lot of the residential development here, obviously, uh, is, is a prime example of that. So I think the whole supply chain's got to get aligned. I think that comes from partly from government legislation and what needs to be done uh, from responsible developers uh, through responsible contractors and supply chain. I think there's a, there's a, there's a moral code and a, a legislative code that we've all got to adhere to. So, Alice, do you, you have any further question on the construction side? Okay, any further question from Alice? You, 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 you didn't ask enough, right? You are supposed to have more questions. You come all the way from Finland and chat with us and then you ask enough questions, eh? Um, yeah, I think that was quite uh, interesting to hear. I don't have any questions right now, but yeah. Okay, now as... Uh, yeah, I'm looking at my watch, right? It seems that uh, we are getting close to the uh, end of our section. But anyway, uh, you, hey, Phoebe, seems um, that yeah, you have I'll, some questions. I'll have a question if you actually meet uh, Dr. Chung. Um, <laughs> being as successful as you are, what kind of attributes do you feel are important for young people today to, to, um, to focus on and to, to make sure that they do try and include in... Um, in their work every day or in their lives every day, what, what attributes do you feel help make a successful, a successful member of community? So actually, my point is very simple. I always ask the people to be focused in, uh, uh, tell the young people to focus in their work. Focus. And then to be innovative. The third one is uh, do your very best. And the fourth one is prepare for the future. That is what you have to do. You cannot just uh, today I'm, I'm working on the A job and then, well, tomorrow I have, uh, well, the, 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 the employer is going to give me a few dollars more and then I jump to another one. Then you can never, never accumulate your experience. Without experience, you worth nothing. So we have been talking about skill. How do you accumulate your skill? Right? So to be focused. So very important and to be innovative. Every day you think something new. Huh? Uh, well, as what he said, innovative products, there's not, uh, well, you failed 26 times already, right? In the past few, three years, within three years. You see, to be innovative, you have to accept, um, you have to face the failure. But, you, uh, so you must have passion. So, you never scare of failure. Continue to run it. Do your very best. So, passion, and prepare for the future. That is my, but anyway, I have two other, uh, you know, experienced person and uh, give some hints to our young people. Um, I'll give you another suggestions. Uh, of course, uh, focus on your uh, study first, but in my point of view, I think uh, attitude is most important because when you do a startup or want to do something, you know, if your attitude is not right or correct, you cannot do it well, very well, you know. So the second one is um, soft skills. Because you f face your client, you need to handle uh, if your team member want to quit your company, how to encourage them to stay here. So the soft skills is very important. The third one is passion. And the fourth is, of course, your expertise. So this is the criteria of the selection, the talents into our company. So, yeah. Mr. Wright? Yeah, I tend to go with you on those issues. I think the first thing to do is get, get your, your technical and academic qualifications under your belt. That then will provide all sorts of opportunities for you. Once you've got that, then it's just about dedication, enthusiasm, and hard work, and really enjoy what you're doing. Don't chase the dollar, chase the opportunity. Um, when I left university, every, uh, everybody wanted money, wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, we went through the lawyer phase, uh, then we went through the banking phase of the Gordon Gecko and 2008 crash, or whenever it was, and uh, we had that phase. 
the guys that are chasing the money aren't the guys that, that really make the money. If you look at the big businesses that have been successful, uh, and you, they're all the technology companies, Facebook, Google, um, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, the, the big five, they made 25 billion US dollars in the first quarter of last year. Now, we're not one of those entrepreneurial guys who started those businesses was uh, chasing dollars. They, they were chasing some sort of high ideal, high social value they wanted to add to society. Uh, you know, whether it be Google, and they wanted to uh, make, uh, control the world's data and become the data experts of the world, or, or um, Amazon who wanted to chase the, the retail to make retail easier. They weren't actually chasing dollar, they were chasing some higher societal value. I really believe as engineers, or as STEM students, that's what you should be doing. That will be make you, make you uh, successful. Uh, you've got to find that added value to society, whether it be in construction, changing the built environment to make it a cleaner and better society that we all live in. You chase that and make get excited about it and your career will be exponentially outstanding. Thank you. Any other question? Because actually, you know, you, in, especially in the STEM education, you really need to have passion. You love it, all right? So uh, I think it's very important. Yeah? But anyway, I think we are running out of time. So I would like to, uh, let me say, say a few words about STEM. Very simple. And actually, I prepared last night already, so don't worry. STEM education really nourish critical thinking, builds problem-solving skill, as I mentioned before, enhances science literacy, fosters innovation, and helps youngsters to develop their career path. And um, I believe STEM education will help our youngsters to develop or apply, this, uh, apply the new technology into our daily life, and which will definitely benefit mankind and also brings them a brighter future. And that concludes our section.